we're so glad to have you here. Thank you so much. Um, it's great to be home. Uh, I was looking forward to coming to Zambia and especially Livingston. I love being here. I was last year about six years ago. Okay, so I guess you're enjoying the weather of Livingston. It's quite hot, but manageable. I came in from South Africa. South Africa is also relatively hot. I was um, at Pretoria University giving lectures there. So I came in today, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, Professor, tell us more about yourself. You'll be amazed to learn that I was actually born in Livingston. Okay. Uh, January 5, 1969, 48 years ago. Uh, my dad, who's now passed on, was a um, deputy college principal at Livingston Trades and my mom was a teacher here. So my childhood was from here. I did my primary school here and then uh, the family moved over to the Copper Belt where I later continued on the Catholic school. Did my primary school and my high school. Went to University of Zambia 1986 to 1990. Uh, taught at University of Zambia briefly after a bad mission and then I left for England almost 27 years ago on a Rhodes Scholarship as a Rhodes Scholar. So I was at Oxford and then uh, after I got my master's from Oxford, I went to do my MB at Hull University. And then I got a lectureship, which is assistant professorship at University of Warwick, where I did my PhD. And then I moved over to join the World Bank in 1998. So I've been with the World Bank for the last uh, 18 years or so. And uh, I worked as senior projects officer. I worked as senior counsel for about 10 years. I'm now program manager and executive head of the Voice Economy program. And in addition to that, I, I teach on the side. So as um, extraordinary professor of uh, law at Invest, uh, Pretoria University. I also taught at um, American University as adjunct professor of law. So in a nutshell, that's my background in addition to other things that I do like writing and so forth. Okay, well, that is such an interesting profile. I'm inspired already. Um, Welcome. So Tell us, what has brought you to Zambia? I've come uh, at the invitation of the Securities and Ex Exchange Commission. Uh, we have a major workshop we're calling Indaba to look at uh, how we can develop capital markets in the region. So I'm going to be giving a paper here in Livingstone. Uh, the conference starts on Monday, uh, which is the 3rd of April, I think. And then from here, I fly over to Lusaka now. I'm going to be giving a master class to players in the financial markets on uh, how to develop capital markets, especially with a regional perspective uh, to that, yeah. I understand you write books. Tell us about your books. Um, I've written about 29 books. Um, I was launching uh, one sometime in October or is it September. I was here in Zambia at the University of Zambia and um, I've continued to write since I left academia. I've sort of kept that thought leadership going because uh, I, I believe strongly that you cannot just be a practitioner without the thought leadership side of you. Uh, you need to strike a balance. Uh, and so I've sort of maintained that and yeah, so I've written about 29 books and about more than 100 journal articles. Okay. So what inspires you to write? There's been a dearth of literature on legal aspects of um, uh, the law, various aspects of the law in Zambia. And I think for a long time uh, that vacuum has not been filled. Uh, you go to universities, the literature that we use when you're teaching students is basically literature written by English scholars. Uh, our scholars, I think, haven't done much uh, to try and uh, fill that gap. Uh, most of what we have from our scholars are case, cases and materials, those type of books, which I think they are okay, but they don't add much scholarship. Uh, there's no originality in there. You're just compiling other people's works, uh, edited volumes and so forth. But we needed work uh, which is groundbreaking, and I thought, uh, you look, there's a niche here, and I think I can make a contribution, and uh, so I've sustained my writing in that uh, dimension. Okay. Do you think Zambians or Africans in general read a lot? Tough question. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to... It's hard to say no or yes, but uh, the reading culture, I think, certainly can be improved. And uh, we're hoping also the writing culture, not just the reading culture, the writing culture, especially among scholars and academicians, thought leaders, um, I, I think we can do better. We've had a number of books by Zambians, written by Zambians, but most of them are non-academic books. Uh, but I think our scholars need to do a little bit much more uh, work in terms of writing and publishing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I understand you're working for World Bank and you lecture at various universities. How do you find time to balance everything? Your personal life, work life, yeah. social life maybe? <laughs> I think there's a lot of time you can do whatever you want to do in life. Uh, people play golf, 
uh, whilst working for various companies and institutions. So instead of playing golf or going to play, I prefer to make some intellectual contributions. Uh, and that, I do it for free. Um, uh, it's not as if one is profiting from it financially. There is no profit whatsoever. So I, uh, like I said, I, I taught at uh, American University as adjunct professor of law. And I also teach currently, I'm an extraordinary professor of law at, at University of Pretoria in South Africa. So they fly me in to give lectures. They have just come from there. Uh, you, you can always balance your time. I'm on leave now for two weeks. So that's when I'm able to do this sort of, I should have been at the beach relaxing. <laughs> but this is my form of relaxing. Okay. Yeah. Having this interaction with you um, has made me really curious. Do you have any intentions of um, joining politics by any chance? It's hard to say. Um, I've gotten a, f a lot of calls from friends and family, you know, uh, trying to excite me into considering a political career. Um, but I think a time will come. It's hard to tell for now. Uh, we're watching the space. You never know what tomorrow may be. You know, you, you just can't predict the future. Okay. Yeah. Um, what message would you give to young people who do not um, want to study? Like who just think maybe I need to do one thing and um, not study as many things as possible even when they can. Like do you think it's possible for someone to study more than one course at a time? Yes, it's very possible. I mean, um, I'll tell you a typical example is when I finished my PhD, that was not the end of my study. Um, I went on to get a higher doctorate, uh, which was the first higher doctorate for a Zambian and uh, remains the, you know, record remains like that. And um, it was the first higher doctorate that Rhodes University in South Africa had given in law, uh, an LLD. That was 10 years after my PhD. I was only 39 years old. Uh, it's very rare, higher doctorates are very rarely awarded. We are not more than 10 of us in Africa. Commonwealth Africa who've got higher doctorates in law and then I kept writing and publishing and again I went on for a second higher doctorate in economics because much of my writing is interdisciplinary law and cognate fields uh, such as economics so I got a DSc in economics from Hull University uh, I was 44 years old uh, so you can be what you want to be you just have to remain focused and determined and if you have to break your own record like in my case I had to get a hard second higher doctorate there's nobody getting it, but I wanted to have a footing in two disciplines because I have an MBA and a legal background. Um, so I was strengthening my footing in uh, both disciplines. So the sky is the limit. Um, don't compare yourself to the person seated next to you or your friend. I think if think internationally, think globally. Uh, look at it from a competitive age uh, where you want to say, I, if they were to say who were the top 20 or 10 scholars to have come out of Commonwealth Africa in the last century, I should com comfortably and confidently say I think I ranked myself and I, in honesty, to be one of them. That's very interesting. So what are your future plans? Future plans, my family, my wife is a medical doctor in the US. Uh, she did an MBA at Leicester and uh, MPH at uh, Manchester. She's uh, just finished her studies at Harvard Medical School, postdoc. And my son, he's about 11, so really that's my focus now. Um, that's very inspiring. Any other last remarks that you have before? I just want to thank you and um, it's glad to be here. Like I said, I was born in this city, so it's got a spiritual connection for me. That's where my umbilical cord was actually cut. Uh, so Livingston is a special place for me and I mean, the Victoria Falls is just right behind here, one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh, I've been to many parts of the world, many cities of the world, London, I live in Washington, I've been to LA, New York, mentioned the Barcelona, uh, Paris, Frankfurt. Really, the scenery, you don't get the scenery of what you get here. This is organic, natural scenery, <laughs> you know. So it's a blessing for me to come from Zambia and, you know, to have this honor to come down here. And so uh, thank you so much again for having me around here. <laughs> thank you for coming. You're most welcome. Thank you.